Right, is everybody seeing on the map? Yeah. Right. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina Muzuleen, amma ba'd. Salu Nabi guys. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When you go in the grave, what's going to be, what are they going to ask you? From today's khutbah, what are they going to ask you? Uh, Man. Man Rabbuk Allah. No, you have to say Allah. Man Rabbuk. Allah. Man Nabiyuk. Muhammad. Man Kitabuk. Quran. They're going to ask you about who is your Rabb. And in English, in English, we pray Rabbil Alameen a lot, don't we? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil yeah. Alameen, all of this. Right, but what does Rabb actually mean, Muhammad? Yesterday we looked at Allah, and the word Allah is our connection with Allah and how we can worship Him. But Rabb actually is part of Allah's Tawheed. There is only one Rabb. But is also connected to people who have Tawheed and people who even don't have Tawheed. A Rabb is connected to people who have Tawheed and people who don't have Tawheed because Allah is the Rabb of Alameen and inside the Alameen there are people who are Muslim and people who are not Muslim but the name Allah is only for people who what does Allah mean? three things remember what does Allah mean? Allah means yeah. powerful powerful that's the third one strong strong that's part of powerful love love that's three things big, love big, powerful Big. Yeah, but the main point of the name of Allah, what's the main point? Why is Allah called to Allah? Worship. Exactly, He's the one that we worship alone so with love. And because we look at His power, we think, SubhanAllah, look how amazing Allah is. So the name Allah is only for those people who actually believe and say, La ilaha illallah. But the name Ar Rabb is for everyone for the trees, the for the cats. For people who believe, people who don't believe, people who are nice, people who are not nice. The name of Allah, ar rabb includes everyone. Now, the name of Allah, ar rabb has four parts to it. Number one, He is the Creator. Number two, Protector. He is the Provider. And Protector. Maybe we could put Protector. Okay. Let's put protector. I was going to say master, but I'll say protector. Just protector and master. Protector strong. and master. Okay, let's put stronger. Master. Yeah, but that's part of him being stronger. All of these are part of him being stronger. He is the rub because he is the absolute strongest who can create. When Allah wants to create, when you want to make a Lego house, what do you need? Lego. Lego. Allah doesn't need that. Allah just says, become a house, and it becomes a house. That's how amazing his creation is. But also, there's one thing about the. Remember, you asked me in the car, car one day one question. You said, "We humans create and Allah creates." Yeah. What's the difference between Allah creating and the humans creating? Do you remember what I said? Yeah, because uh, the people yeah. mean things that Allah made for them. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. People need things that Allah made that for them. But the name of Allah, Physical Allah being, exactly, so we can't make something from nothing. That's a very good point because only Allah can do that. But the other thing is when Allah creates, He creates with a cycle. So the whole reason why Allah creates, anything that Allah creates has a beginning, has a middle and has an end. And all of Allah's creation reminds us of going back to Allah the Creator. You can make a car, you can make a house. Does it have a beginning, middle and end? Yes, it does, but it's only going to go down. You can, make a shed. you can make a shed, but it's only going to go down. Do you understand? It's not going to be like it is when it is brand new. It's always going to go down. It will need repairing. You will get old. It will stop falling apart. And then you need to buy a new one or build a new one. But the creation of Allah is that He creates something from nothing. Then it becomes strong. And then it goes dies down again. Just like that plant over there. It was a seed. The seed came from nothing. Allah created the seed. And, and then, then, dead, and and then it became strong. A big strong plant. And then what's going to happen? It's gonna die he again. Died. This is how Allah creates, and this is how Allah is the creator because He wants to remind us of that cycle, and that's why I put arrows going like that because it's a cycle so that we can remember Him. This is part of the name of the name of Allah, Ar Rabb, the Lord. Can there be a creator who does that? No. No, that's why it's part of Tawheed. This is called Tawheed Ar Rububiyya. What's it called? Tawheed and this is part of Tawheed of Allah's Lordship that there is only one creator there's only one person or one thing that can provide for you and he 
is a Rabb and he continues to provide for every single person in his universe every single day. Let me give you another example. There's four pe five people in our house. If we want to go get food from the shop, I need to think about all five people. So I need to buy him something, I need to buy him something, I need to buy her something, I need to buy her something. And then you right. buy your something. And I need to buy myself something. So now, when I go to the shop, I need to think about all these things, right? Is it possible for me to feed 20 people, 30 people, 50 no, people every single day? No, no, no. It's too much. But Allah is the provider who provides for all of his creation. The plants, the, the stars, the humans, apple the apple tree. trees, the jinn, the atoms. He keeps them all alive because this is part of his tawheed. He is also the protector and the master, meaning the reason why he's the protector and the master, meaning nothing gets corrupted in his universe. It continues to go round and round. It doesn't fall. It, gets it doesn't begun, fall begun, apart. Begun, begun, so begun. now you've made this wonderful spaceship car kind of thing and it goes view but if something happens then, to it if something like that happens to it and it breaks it falls down. you need to go and protect it and make sure nothing happens to it and allah does that for the whole of his creation for the whole of the universe all the solar systems and the stars and the planets and all all of those things that's why he's a protect and i said there was a fourth one and there is a fourth one meaning he is the one who makes the laws now, the, lo the, the proper way of saying it is that he is the legislator, meaning he makes the laws. How many times do you pray? Five. How many times do you have to fast in a year? Okay. I have a question. Yeah, okay. Wait, yeah. Let me answer that question first. Um, how many times do you fast in a year? 30. 30 days. So all of that is connected to Allah's laws because he is the one who gives us the religion. We can't make our own religion. We can't say, oh, well, some of it I like and some of it I don't like. No, because when you follow the laws, it's because you believe in Allah being the Rabb. What is your question, young man? You know, in the House of Parliament, when they're Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rabb, 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 Rabb. Rabb, go on. Allah and the people in the House of Parliament yeah. also make They do. Yeah, they do make rules in the House of the Parliament. So, what's your point? That you know, most of the things that they, they talk about, yeah, Allah kind of likes most of those things anyway. So they talk about looking after the disabled, looking after the elderly, looking after the poor, looking after children, making sure bad things don't happen in society. Allah likes those things anyway. So there's nothing wrong with it. But what we are saying is the religion. So now if somebody says to you, uh, you need to pray six times a day. What are you going to say? Um, where where, does, where does the Rabb say that you have to pray six times a day? Because he is the one who makes the laws. And he is the one who creates it. Now, all of this, so what is the Rabb? When I say to you, who is your Lord? You say, Allah is my Lord. What does that mean? Rabb. What does that mean though? That's good. But what does it mean? There's four things. He's Come on, we're going to finish now. Concentrate. Provide, God. protect them as Right. When we understand these four things, you know what happens? The person who has them increases in iman. Iman, good, but specifically ikhlas. Why does it what does ikhlas mean? What's ikhlas mean? To make Allah happy. To go to Jannah. To do the right thing. That's taqwa. To make Allah happy is ikhlas. So now, when you realize that Allah is our Rabb, you will realize that He is a creator and I need to be good inside of His creation and to other people in His creation. He is the provider, so I need to seek good provisions and not bad provisions. And that creates ikhlas with Allah. But then you realize that Allah is my protector. And I don't need to be worried at night time about nightmares and monsters and seeing bad things and having bad dreams because Allah is my protector. I just need Allah. I need Allah to be happy with me and the laws as well you will follow them because you will think I want to make Allah happy Do you understand? Do you have any? It looks like you've got a question What's your question? What's provisions? Provisions, what's provisions? The provider What's providing? 
That's what she just said. She What's said, providing? If I provide you something, what is it? What's provision? Provision provider is the same thing. When somebody gives you something, Allah is the one who gives. Allah is the one who protects. Allah is the one who makes the laws. And Allah is the one who creates. When you understand these four things, that He is your Rabb, it will create a class in every part of your life. Allah, make us of those people who believe in you and give us tawheed. Say ameen. Hadha wallahu alam. Sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.